let's go over to the United States, where we're set up for another presidential rematch. American voters heading to the polls in November with Donald Trump and Joe Biden once more, each securing enough delegates to clinch their party's presidential nominations. They come as the US moved a step closer to banning TikTok today, following a vote in the House of Representatives. Let's bring in the Chair of Republicans Overseas UK, Mr Greg Swenson. Greg, welcome to the Independent Republic. Nice to see you. Great to see you, Mike. Great to see you. I mean, I don't think anyone was surprised that it would be Biden, Trump too. Um, but this is the official um, count, I suppose, coming in. So what's different, would you say, between now and the last time around? Oh, it's a, it's a huge difference. Yeah. Last, you know, last time around, Biden was supposed to be the, the unifier, the, the president that would bring the country together. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, he was propped as a moderate. Right. Well, now we know he's been nothing. He has, he's, he's been very left wing. He's been he? extremely left wing. He's been controlled by the, the Bernie Sanders and mm. the Jeremy Corbyn wing right. of his party. And, and he's done nothing to unify the country. And you saw that in the State of the Union speech yeah. last night. 60% of the viewers thought it was divisive. Right. I hate to use that word from yes. the left, but, but it very much uh, Well, it's it was very true. political, wasn't it, rather yeah. than about America? It, it really was. It was basically a campaign speech, yeah. right? So he, he yelled, shouted the whole time. Mm. It, it was, you know, talked about, again, once, once again, repelling voters mm. by talking about the MAGA of extreme right and yes. the Trump people. It's not a way to appeal to voters. I was really surprised by mm. I think so. And he's got very little going for him, hasn't he? You know, the oh, yeah. war uh, is going on still in Ukraine. Yeah. He hasn't got a great body of support behind backing the war uh, from the Ukrainian side. He doesn't really seem to be doing much to stand up to Russia. Right. Um, he doesn't really seem to be supporting Israel in the way that many Americans would expect him to do. That's right. And yet, you know, he's sending his uh, Secretary of State over there all the time, sort of trying to get ceasefires organised. Sure. He predicted there would be a ceasefire by Monday of this week because that's the start of Ramadan. He got that wrong. Yep. You know, meanwhile, he's got millions of uh, illegal migrants coming over the border. Yeah. You know, he's, he's failing the economy on... is about the only thing he's got going for him, right? Well, yeah, not, even that is, is, you know, not exactly perfect, right? Mm. So there's some, some metrics that are positive, like GDP growth, but... GDP growth will be much lower this mm. year than last. And it's really all about inflation when you talk about the, e the economy. So you can see some good numbers coming out. Yeah. But if they don't affect the people, the people are really right. upset. Food prices are up 20%. Petrol prices are up 40%. Yeah. So he's failing on the economy. He's failing on the border. He's failing on foreign policy. Those are the top three issues for Americans. Mm. So this, is, this election is really well suited for President Trump because his policies and his outcomes were so much better than Biden. Right. So this becomes a referendum on two administrations, Trump right. wins. And of course, last time they made a big deal, didn't they, the Democrats, of Joe Biden being a career politician, having been, you know, foreign affairs advisor, been on the Foreign Select Committee for years yeah. and years and years, been vice president of Barack Obama, knew the White House inside out. Yeah. He's made a complete rick of it, though, hasn't he? Absolutely. And, you know, they thought it would be, you know, the adults are coming back, right. you know, America's back. Well, the first things he did right out of the gates were, you know, offend our allies, yeah. you know, the Saudis, the Israelis, the UK, yeah. for that matter. And then, of course, the debacle in Af Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. So Robert Gates, about that. you know, Robert Gates, the former uh, Secretary of Defense, you know, argued that Biden's been wrong on every foreign policy issue for the last 50 years. Right. And he's continued that record. It's, mm. <laughs> it's really yeah. difficult to do. But it is quite difficult to do. To do but, and, and indeed, all he's ever known in his life is working uh, in that Washington, right. uh, inside that beltway in Washington, which today actually did something quite surprising, I thought. Uh, let's talk about the TikTok yep. vote because House of Representatives unusually united quite a few um, Democrats and Republicans yeah. voted to ban TikTok. Now, Donald Trump has a slightly different view because he doesn't feel that he wants to leave everything up to Mark Zuckerberg, right. which is fair enough. Yeah. Um, but do you think it could happen? Could they actually ban TikTok? Well, there, there were only 65 no votes. And that's, you know, as you said, it's you know the, an unusual amount of, of bipartisanship. Right. So you know it could happen. I hope it doesn't mm. because I think the bill is written wrong. It, it's, it's way too It seems quite un-American to ban a social media on yeah. the basis that it's run by a foreign government. Yes. I mean, look, there, there are restrictions on foreign ownership of newspapers mm. and TV stations. I get it. And I think there are flaws with TikTok, no doubt about yeah. it. I'm not arguing that TikTok is great. I think, you know, the fact that the, Ch the Communist Party of China has access to that kind of data mm. is troubling. But it's, the problem is it's too broad mm. and it gives the president, whoever it is, but in this case, Biden, who has a history of censorship, has a history of, you know, going back to 
October of 2020 with censoring the New York Post right. and the Hunter Biden laptop. So those are really troubling situations that we don't want to see repeated. So I, I hope that they they tighten this bill up and just make it about TikTok right. specifically yes. and not give Biden or any other president license to censor. I think that's important. Well, also, if the US is anything like the UK, I mean, we were, you know, two yards away from welcoming Huawei basically into yep. Downing Street yep. and into every government department to run the communication system. You know, eventually it didn't happen, but it, it very nearly happened, and who yep. knows how close they got. But you would right. probably have to imagine that with China owning an awful lot of American debt, there's going to be an awful lot of Chinese, you know, fingers in pies, if you like, in the US. Without a doubt. And you're not going to somehow stop Chinese influence or get a Chinese knowledge base right. by just banning TikTok, are you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, a really small part of this big machine. If you look at the dependency on rare earth minerals, for example, other critical minerals, right. you know, we have a, a really un, unfair dependency on China for, and, and these things are, you know, very much involved in national security and defense. So yeah, it, it's a problem, but I don't think the way to fix the problem is to, is to give the president the ability to ban any social right. network or any any media platform. That's you know that's what happened in October right. 2020. Well, we'll have the same conversation as we're having here about extremism, won't we? And suddenly Rumble will be an extremist platform <laughs> and Gab will be an extremist yeah. platform and Truth Social will be an extremist yeah, platform of course. and they'll all get banned. Yeah, and they shut they shut down several platforms in, in uh, early 2021. So, you know, this is something that we've seen a lot of. So I think if a TikTok ban five years ago might have might have just sailed right through right. Um, because of the national security issues. But right now, there's a real suspicion, both on the right and the left, of censorship. Mm. We've seen too much of it. It's, it's a real issue, especially in an election year. We don't want to give the president or anyone else that kind of power to censor opposition media. Right. So from now until the conventions in the summer, what are the sort of you know sort of signposts to, to, to look out for, as it were, for people watching this tonight? You know, what's the next kind of signal as to how Donald Trump is doing and how Biden is doing? Well, I, I think the polls are are pretty clear right now. And, and look, both both candidates have flaws. You know, Trump is not the perfect candidate. He, he's never polled above fifty. I think that's a risk for the Republican Party. He, he's topped out at forty-seven. CBS had him at fifty-two last right. week, but that's an outlier. Right. But the best thing going for Trump is Biden. You know, Trump's negatives are minus 10. Yes. He's at, you know, 54 and, and or 44 and 54. But Biden's at 38 and 59. He, he's minus 21. Right. So I, I think if, unless, and, and then the question is, what could Biden do, like Harry Truman in 48, right. to change the momentum? I just can't imagine yeah. what he could possibly do. He tried it on Thursday. It was a failure. But we just had a conversation about um, how bad uh, the Tories are in, and what a bad yeah. state the Tories are in. But there are still some clinging on to the fact that if we just go through the summer and England have a great result of the Euros and somehow we win <laughs> loads of gold to Team GP at the <laughs> yeah. Olympics in Paris, um, it might actually improve things. And, you know, sometimes sporting events can turn around. Sure. I mean, the Olympics are obviously always big for the Americans. Uh, yeah. Um, but again, Biden is not a man that likes to wrap himself in the flag, whereas Donald Trump is. Right, and and I think, you know, so the Olympics will be better for Trump. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, I think any Olympics are good for the Republican presidents, typically. Uh, I would argue also that that there is no good news between now and then. Remember, the, the Democratic National Convention is in Chicago, right. which is a completely failed state right now. Yes. Failed city, failed state of Illinois. And that's not going to showcase well. They'll try to clean it up. They'll try to keep the homicides down right. during the convention. But that's not really going to but show But there'll well. be presumably lots of demonstrations as well, oh, yeah. pro-Palestinian and, and others. You'll have that. And, and look, the, the African-American community in Chicago is becoming really fed up mm. with the migrant crisis, right. right? So the resources are being taken away from the African-American community. It's one third of the electorate in Chicago. It's very meaningful. If Biden doesn't win, the Democrats have always been completely dependent on black, the black vote. Yeah. They, they typically win 90% of the black vote. If they don't get 85, they lose elections. And right now they're polling at 60 mm. with African-Americans. So that's a disaster yeah. looming. And that'll be showcased in Chicago because of the prominence of the African-American community there, but also the fact that the city is a complete and it's utter a complete mess. complete basket case, yeah. absolutely. That's such a shame. I used to yeah. love Chicago. Beautiful what a great, city. I have what a, a home there, it kills me. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable stuff. Yeah. Greg, good to see you. Thank great you very much. You, Greg Swenson with me. the word from uh, the United States of America.